Hello and welcome to this Dr. Ross Maths key skill video on solving a one-step equation. Now to solve equation means to find out what the value of x is. So we need to determine what is x such that this equation would be true. Now sometimes you can do it in your head. You just think, well, what plus 6 is equal to 11? Well, 5 plus 6 is equal to 11. So instantly we've got the solution to the equation. It's that x is equal to 5. But if you want to show you some working, I'll show you what we can do here. So we've got x plus 6 is 11. Now the strategy here is to get x on its own. So we want to get x on its own, or whatever the variable is, if it's y, etc. And the way we do this is to sort of think about balancing the equation. So whatever you do to one side of the equation, you must do the same to the other. Yep, so these are the key points here. So, we want to get x on its own, but we've got this plus 6 here that we don't want. So, how do we get rid of the plus 6? We do the opposite. What's the opposite of adding 6? Subtracting 6. So, what I'm going to do is minus 6 from the left-hand side of the equation. But as per these instructions here, whatever you do to one side of the equation, you have to do the same to the other. So I'm also going to minus 6 from the other side of the equation. So it's a balancing act. Imagine if you took 6 sweets from the left side of the scales, you'd also have to take away 6 sweets from the other side of the scale, so they still balance. Now, minusing 6 will get rid of this plus 6. It cancels it out, we say, just leaving x. And then we've also got a minus 6 from the 11. I've got 5 here. And I'm only putting them in brackets to say I'm doing this thing to each side of the equation, just so I don't confuse it with, with whatever equations I've got here. Part B. We've got y minus 4 equals 3. Now, you might be able to do this in your head. What minus 4 equals 3? Well, it's 7. But let's do it with working. So we want to get y on its own to solve the equation. We don't want that minus 4 there. So we do the opposite to get rid of it. So the opposite of subtracting 4 is adding 4. So I'm going to add 4 to the left-hand side of the equation. But whatever I do to the left side of the equation, I have to do the same to the right to balance it out. So we add 4 to this as well. So when we add 4 to the left-hand side, it cancels out the minus 4, because minus 4 plus 4 is just 0. It disappears. So we just have y there. And when we add 4 to the right-hand side, we get 7. So we get the 7 as we expected. 7 minus 4 is indeed equal to 3. What about the next one? 3x is equal to 12. We want to get rid of that 3 in front of the x, so we're just left with x. Now remember that 3x means 3 times x. So x has been multiplied by 3. We want to get rid of that 3, so we've got to do the opposite, which is to divide by 3. So the divide by 3 will cancel out the times by 3 there, just leaving x. And the 12 divided by 3 is 4, and there we go, we've got the solution. And if we just check that, 3 times 4 is equal to 12. That's true. And the very last one, p over 4 is equal to 5. Now, what's happening to the p here? It's being divided by 4. Remember, over 4 just means divide by 4. So we want to cancel out that over 4 to just leave p. What's the opposite of dividing by 4? Well, it's timesing by 4. So if we times the left-hand side by 4, we've also got to times the right-hand side of the equation by 4. So p divided by 4 times by 4, the divide by 4 and times 4 cancel each other out, just leaving p. If that's not clear what I just did, just think if that was a natural number. Imagine p was 12. Well, 12 divided by 4 times by 4 would just be 12. So we get back to where we started. we just left with the p. So we end up with p is equal to, and 5 times 4 is 20. So that's the final answer.